Welcome and welcome back. In today's uh, or this week's uh, video, we're going to talk about three things. One, two, three. Can I do that how simple? Do you, how, do you, how do you do three? One, two, three. No, one, two, three. I don't know. All right. Anyways, we're going to talk about that. Three things <laughs> we wish we would have known about kettlebells when we started. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to give you a quick snippet, we're going to talk about how to move the kettlebell. Okay. Right. That's important. Uh, the rest you take and what to do with it and the volume. Like, pump up the volume? Kind of. Okay. Well, tell me about the first one then. <laughs> Let's start with how to... Forget about the kettlebell. last one. We'll clarify in time. <laughs> Stick around to the end and find out, y'all. <laughs> the, the first thing is the conceptual approach to moving a kettlebell. If I had someone to explain to me the, the right way to move a kettlebell, the right way, the right approach to a kettlebell, would have saved me a lot of time. And a, a lot of our students will hear things like, you don't swing a kettlebell, you move your body and a kettlebell swings around you. What that really means is when you learn to connect the kettlebell to your body, mm -hmm. usually by armed body contact, pulling at the right time, whatever it happens to be, and you move well, the kettlebell is going to do what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. And we both had this approach because we just kind of tried to figure it out of, you know, trying to rip this kettlebell off the ground. A lot of elbow stuff, a lot of shoulder stuff, a lot of wrist stuff. Uh, we really didn't get, you know, you, we really didn't get how to move a kettlebell with the legs and how the leg power transfers through the body and all the connection stuff. So if, if we would have known then what we know now, we would go back and spend a lot more time trying to find our legs. We'd spend more time jumping. We'd spend more time doing simpler skills, uh, trying to get a swing down rather than going right to a snatch, doing a lot more vertical work. Uh, because vertical work is less complex and it helps you find your legs. So the, the take home there is if you're thinking about a kettlebell in terms of moving it, whether it's a swing, a snatch, a clean, whatever, reframe your thinking, learn how to connect a kettlebell to your body and then move your body effectively. When you do that, the kettlebell does what you want it to do. It's going to feel light. It's going to feel effortless. You're not going to get the same jarring. You're not going to get the same pains uh, in your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, your neck. Really, really important change in perspective, uh, but very, very valuable. Yeah, so patience is a virtue and find those damn legs out. That's really what it comes down to. For sure. Yeah. All right. Now we're in it. Just finished my set. Now I need to take a rest. So do I just chill back on my iPhone and check my Instagram feed or uh, what should I do here? That's what I did. That's what a lot okay, of people yeah. do. We see it. We post it. We see it. <laughs> we there. There's usually this rush. I mean, when you hear, let's say you're you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do that snatch test. That's in my future. I'm gonna get one of these these certifications. So I gotta do, you know, you do the math, you figure out, you gotta do 20 snatches a minute for five minutes, and how's that gonna go? And you 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 got you know chalk all over your face and ink all over your your fingers, and you're you're doing all kinds of calculations. That's calculations. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but. Like sort you, of you, you get ahead of yourself and you don't realize that you're nowhere near ready to do this thing. You've got a lot of time to do it. So if you just start um, and trust the, the, the process and you get consistent, you're going to be in a better place. One of the things that's really important is what you do with your rest. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many times I've read this, this advice and ignored it every time for years was skip rope, shadow box, Fast and loose drills. This sounds like not. There's like chaos when you're finishing a set that you're like gonna just keep moving. This it, sounds like the it, it does. Table. It it, it sounds it sounds like it. It, it's like whoa, this is crazy. How am I gonna do this? I've got to do you know 20 snatches a minute for five minutes. <laughs> well, <laughs> the 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 simple answer is what I would do now is I would do two snatches a minute and then I would continue to move. And then if I could, you know, I do some shadow boxing and some skipping rope. If one, I could do that, I would do three, and then I would do five, and I would build up. When you, when you learn how to recover well, you are going to prime your system to recover. When, when you look at the people who succeed with the snatch test specifically, they're people who have great aerobic capacity. And Jeremiah can tell you firsthand that, especially the, the most recent time he did the snatch test, he did a ton of cardio and I watched it. It looked pretty easy for him. It was. So the, your aerobic capacity is huge and you've got to build that. So when you're doing your swings and you're doing light shadow boxing, you know, you're not doing you know, rounds on the heavy bag, you're not trying to do double <laughs> unders with the rope, you're just trying to move a little bit. When you do that, you force your aerobic system to recover faster. 
And then as you, as you are able to do that, then you increase your volume. So rather than just going for it and trying to do your 10 plus 10 um, that you know you're gonna need eventually, do two plus two, do your shadow boxing, skip your rope, stay loose and, and, and teach your body to recover because eventually that recovery uh, between rounds or the, you know, the 20 seconds left that you have of the minute to rest before you go do this again is gonna be the thing that carries you through in, in, in that snatch test. So do not, do not overlook that piece of advice like we did. Ooh, that was a big mistake, I think. It was. Uh, so <laughs> do, do, <laughs> do, do fewer reps build that capacity and then as as you you can add the reps in later focus on your technique focus on your proficiency uh focus on your power and let the let the aerobic base build up in the background all right well here it is we promised them three things yeah so let's talk about the volume uh seeing as though we sort of led into it with you know <laughs> a snatch test or something with high volume and getting into that scenario so how we control our volume your, your body understands a few things uh, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't just understand intensity which is what a lot of people use to train by intensity um, usually what that means is load or how hard you're working it also understands volume it understands consistent signaling and one thing that I was particularly prone to in the beginning was just going after intensity and forgetting about the volume and not spending the time at the lower lighter weights doing my light and my medium workouts. You know, I wanted to press one of those big 48s. You um, did it. <laughs> I did, I did, but I didn't do it until I shifted my training. Um, you know, until I, I, I set my body a very consistent message that I'm okay with heavier weight. Um, and I, I really put the reps in. Uh, but in the beginning, I would go, you know, when I first started my kettlebell training, a 16 felt very heavy to me. Like, whoa, how do these guys do yeah. this? Um, you know, w watching the other guys at the gym who could do 20. So I do that and I do a few reps. Um, it wasn't for a while that I understood ladder training, but rather than doing a recommended three ladders before I move on to a weight, oh, I did a ladder, let me bump up a bell. And it worked for a while. I'd go, you know, I'd go, went 20, then I went 24, then I went 28. And then it's like, okay, now I'm at 32, but that's when I started to slow down. And that's when I realized I've got to put more time in. So. The, the body doesn't just understand intensity. And, and what I mean specifically is, is a lot of people will go um, with, with traditional strength training. Oh, I did this, let me throw five pounds on. Let me throw two and a half oh, yeah. on, whatever. Next um, time, yeah. little, little and, and, and it's like, no, spend some time, do your light work, do your medium work, let your body accommodate to this, this, new, uh, this new load and increase your, your body's capacity with volume. You don't need to go right to the next weight. When you give your body this, this consistent messaging over time and you do it in a way where your load is heavy enough, you're still sending a message, hey, you gotta get stronger. You're also building some muscle tissue um, but, and you're also not tearing yourself down uh, uh, in, in the process. So when you're always at like, you know, me, my, when I first started, I was always at like 90% of max. Oh yeah, why not? You can't do that all the time. And, I didn't even know what my max was. <laughs> You can do it as a beginner because you, you're dumb. You don't know anything and all your gains are coming from learning how to move a kettlebell, but very quickly you, you hit a wall. So spend some time with the, with the lighter load. If you, can do, if you can do a 24 for a ladder, don't just jump to a 28. Spend some time and do another ladder to 24. And then when you can do two, do a third. And every now and then, you know, maybe you wanna, you wanna pop up and say, hey, can I press a 28? Do it once. Singles. <laughs> do some singles. Go back to your ladders. Um, you know, do it on a high intensity day. But that doesn't mean like, oh, I'm at, I've, 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 you know, I've hit this past this threshold. Now I'm, now I'm a 28 guy. And every time I go to work out, I'm going to push the 28. Eventually, you're going to come to the 28, and it's going to feel heavy. So spend some time with the lighter weight, increase the volume. You will make progress. So those are the three things that uh, I certainly wish that I would have known when I first started. It will save you a lot of time. Um, it's going to feel slower in the beginning, but you will definitely uh, make more progress over the long haul. And consistency is the most important thing with, with all of this stuff. Yeah, and no doubt. And the fourth thing that I wish I would have known was that there was two guys like us out there that dispersed this information to <laughs> would-be kettlebellists and uh, even intermediate and advanced kettlebell practitioners. So if you like what you hear or you like what you see, be sure to subscribe and all that good stuff. Download the Bells by Iron Revival app, and if you're new, you can try the Starter Pack program. 
And guess what? You're going to definitely be fitting into the principles we're talking about here. And um, anything else? Nope, that's All it. All right, stay strong. Three times, folks.